What's up everybody? We have we have a few things to unpack. The sub season is pretty much over and we are looking back to the season. We are looking back to this video. I'll be looking back on how many people have engaged themselves in a vital, vital discussion with the like buttons and with their comments. And what I'm really been thinking about a lot lately and what really of course sparked the whole discussion is now that we have two models in SUP racing that are kind of like fighting for survival and I want to pull back a few layers on this a little bit and analyze and ask some questions not making decision because I think I'm not in the decision making position but I want to ask some questions and have some certain aspects to the topic of flat water SCP racing versus surf racing. And this might take longer, so you can always skip forward or skip out right away if you're not interested. Otherwise, I'll appreciate if you stick with it. The two concepts, of course, we have is historically that SCP is a surf paddle sport and it takes place through waves. And we all remember the exciting, exciting times at the Battle of the Paddle where a lot of guys are coming down a wave, going around that, what then was called the hammer buoy, legendary times. And over time, we have now a second concept, of course, of the flat water paddling. So many people found the stoke of paddling that do not live on an ocean, and they are all started to paddle flat water, and they have their own events as well. We've seen how surf racing, surf sub racing kind of has died off. Open ocean downwind sub racing has kind of died off, but the flat water part prevailed. So in surf racing, of course, it's all about the waves and the unknown factor causing some sort of unforeseeable situation that keeps the viewer in suspense there is going to be lots of lead changes and lots of things and actions going on throughout the race and i want to just use this with a technical race of course one of the like more exciting parts of scp racing so we have that but now everybody's talking about the future of the sub and the racing of course everybody is wondering is this going to be olympic is this going to be a huge sport are we including ocean people and flat water people? So what is the common ground? And also, how much lock can we accept into our SCP races? So the lock factor, of course, in those tech races with waves is a really big talking point. And we can ask ourselves, what are the influences there that can influence, the influence that influences the outcome of a race and the main factor of course first are the waves so we can go through point by point and strip away each factor or well, the number one factor of course are the waves the second influence is the wind direction and strength those are the two main factors in any kind of ocean race sub surfing technical race that come into play the next two factors, of course, are also the rider's board and the rider's weight and the ratio weight to board in combination with the board length. So we're trying to strip away all the factors that are influencing the race in any kind of way. Whether that is desirable or not is entirely your decision. Now that we stripped away most of the external factors, where have we arrived? You guessed it, we have arrived in a flat water pond. We have no waves and we try to hold a race without wind or a very minimal amount of wind. Now all we have left are the rider's weight and the volume and length and shape of their board. And from this point on, we can now ask ourselves, what do we want? What is more exciting? We can bring in a commercial aspect. What 
brings more of your and therefore more likes and clicks, just like you are doing, in order for organizers to sell advertising. Then we can go jump over into the Olympics and say like in the Olympics, from what I know, it's all about the human strength on a level playing field. So if you want to go with this thought, the lucky part will have to be stripped away. So we are doing lane racing on a one class board. Is that something that is good for the sport? Is this something that we want for the sport? It's a hard decision for me to make. We can compare with other sports. For example, 100 meter running, track and field. Extremely successful. Bunch of guys running for plus minus 10 seconds down a straight line. Widely successful. What does that come down to? Probably the guy's shoes mostly and the guy's fitness of the most. On the other hand of the spectrum, we can take a sport like surfing, open ocean surfing. To me, competitive surfing is at least 50% luck. Do you sit in the right spot at the right time when a wave comes that gives you the opportunity to score a certain point? Comparable maybe to like a game of backgammon. You have skills combined with the luck of rowing a dice. So where do we want to stand with SUP? And right now, to get maybe the more juicy or the political part, we have two organizations. We have a canoe rowing federation that is pretty much a lane racing, no luck kind of situation in flat water. So what is better? I don't really know. I've seen a great flat water race in Hungary a year and a half ago that was absolutely tremendously fun, uh, very good to watch and we've seen ISA in Puerto Rico. Also very cool to watch. Those waves are always make quite for an exciting race. The question of course is what about the inclusiveness? People that are going to a Lake Bolaton, all our Eastern European friends, they would have a real struggle and I don't care if they go train for six months you don't you learn the ocean not in only just six months in pedaling on top of it this is something that most of these people are growing up with so where are we gonna go with all of this and i really have to say i don't really know and i'm kind of happy that i don't have to be the decision maker in this because each concept has its pros and its cons and i can't really go one direction or the other. I'm really struggling with it. Waves versus flat water. Both had their legitimacy uh, this year. Uh, we had also just to throw the European SUP in Denmark into the mix. Uh, that was another uh, concept there. Also with beach running, beach starts versus flat water starts. So there's so many questions and each one of them has their own legitimacy and at this point i can't really conclude this video i really can't say what is the better solution let's start the discussion and we'll see you guys in the next video